Timeout show live at the Broad Street Tavern tonight. We have the Hillsdale Academy track team in the house. And we're going to talk Hillsdale Academy track tonight with my friend Mike Roberts. It's all brought to you by our friends at Performance Automotive in Hillsdale and Jonesville, the Jack Smith Agency, Hillsdale Travel Center, Randy's Auto Body, and, of course, Coach B's Driving School, uh, who properly trained up Martin Peterson to be a safe driver on the roadways. Uh, Martin is... I don't think he has more than seven, eight tickets since he's been driving. So uh, all thanks to Coach B's driving school. But tonight, Mike Roberts, uh, my friend, 14 years, the head coach at the Hillsdale Academy for track. Uh, our guest tonight, Mike, thank you for making it happen. I know you're incredibly busy right now. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us, Andy. 14 years, man. It just, it's incredible. I was talking to Rachel Doty over there a minute ago, and uh, we went to school together at, we have older children now and it's just time's flying man yeah it is flying by i can't believe it's been 14 years already uh back in hillsdale county and uh, coaching track here talk a little bit about uh, your program since you took it over and obviously uh you know varsity sports at the uh, hillsdale academy you were kind of in on the ground level on that yeah um it's been a lot of fun it's been fun to watch it grow. Uh, most importantly, we just have an outstanding group of kids year after year. Kids that want to be involved, they want to participate. Uh, so we've been blessed to have that. Um, also really great to have teachers and coaches uh, alongside making this happen. Uh, I have a great staff that I get to coach with. They're my friends, they're great track people, they're great educators. Uh, so when you put all that together, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Hillsdale College always surprises people, uh, not only in the GLIAC Conference, uh, where they're really competitive in all of the sports uh, against a lot bigger schools, but even with your story, it's a great one at Hillsdale Academy. Uh, I think there were some giggles when you guys started competing at the varsity level, and would, would it ever be a competitive enterprise? And, and here you're competitive in everything you play in. Uh, how has that evolution been? And I think it happened sooner than anybody expected. Well, again, um, some of that was a number standpoint. So as we added students to the school, um, that, that was one thing. Uh, but again, the enthusiasm was great as kids continued to participate and then success built on success, um, one program to another program. Uh, and, and so year to year, we started to climb. And then, you know, for a while now, we're trying to stay competitive. So it's fun to, to get competitive. Uh, it's another thing to stay competitive. And that's something that... Um, you know, you know, that's a little harder, actually, and that's something that we're working at, and I think we've been able to do. How many doors do you knock on uh, during the course of the, the winter to make sure that you get every child that attends the academy to run track? Yeah, I think there's, uh, I think people think that I make every student <laughs> run track. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, I do try to invite every kid to the team. I think track has a lot to offer every single kid. You've got throwers, you've got jumpers, sprinters, distance runners. I also think that track makes your athletic program better. Uh, so there's a culture there that I think is really important to a lot of things. Uh, so certainly um, that one-on-one -on -one conversation, several of these athletes were in my office talking about track and field this winter, maybe even uh, a day before trying to make up their mind. Third sport of the year for some of them, uh, coming off of a long winter, having to get in shape, having to go out in the crummy weather to start with. It's, it's, it's a tough beginning uh, that we have to go through in this sport. How do you share track time uh, with the folks over at the college? Obviously, they have a thriving track program as well. Uh, how does that work for practice time, and how do you kind of arrange the schedules from that standpoint? You know, for years we had a great relationship uh, with Coach Lumberg over there, and then now going with Andy Town. Andy and I overlapped a year at the college competing together. Uh, and so it takes a lot of coordination, uh, and they, they work with us, so that's our facility too. Um, that can be a little tricky sometimes when we don't have the pole vault pit because the college kids do come first as they should. So we have the blessing of that facility, but we have to blend that with sharing time. Not only that, but junior high kids. We have 50 kids out for our junior high team this year. Um, so it works out great. The college track team is very open. Uh, their staff works with us and allows us to use everything that's there. So uh, it, it's a good thing. What a great situation to have not just your awesome staff from the academy standpoint, but all of those track coaches uh, at Hillsdale College as a resource. Yeah, no, they're, they're great to talk with them. Um, it's wonderful. Then you look at our staff. You've got Michael Nicola, who was an All-American at Hillsdale College. You have Julie Budd, who was an All-American at Hillsdale College. Um, 
Jason Meckelberg, our pastor. Uh, coach uh, is not be able to be with us this year due to some illness, but Chris Heckel stepped in, an All-American from Hillsdale College, Mark Schulte, and, and Neil Brady. So every event has a great coach to it. All the field events are covered. I just wondered how these guys do it, uh, who try to coach track by themselves or maybe with one assistant. It's just so many different nuances, so many different events that you have to be able to cover and have some expertise about. Right. You've got, you got the discus, you've got the pole vault, you have the hurdles, you know, all the different things. So, you know, we take it pretty serious. And even from a supervision standpoint, to try to get these kids coaching as much as possible is really key. And that's, that's important to track and field. Since the, the 14 years have been going along, have you changed? Uh, obviously, you're always reading and studying and learning. What, what has been one of the things, if you could isolate one, that you've changed in your practice approach uh, that has paid dividends for your program? Well, it's interesting. I think in 14 years, that warm-up has changed. I know it sounds simple, but uh, going from a static to a dynamic, and that's happening all across the board. So uh, just how we take care of ourselves, paying attention to the body of warming up and cooling down. We know a lot more. We do it different than we did 14 years ago. Uh, we've probably been doing that for about five or six years now, and I think that pays off with better performance and less injury. Mike Roberts is the track coach at the Hillsdale Academy. They are right in the middle of their 2015-16 season. In fact, they have a very important meet coming up tomorrow night at Camden Frontier, uh, the division track meet, and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But, Mike, uh, take us into the season from the beginning until where you are right now. Uh, any surprises? Uh, how do you sort of take a look back and, and look at the progress so far with your team? Uh, it's been a good season so far. We've been focused on individual uh, performances and building success and bi building shape. Um, we've had some highlights along the way. Um, a lot of our middle distance kids have been running well. We actually set a couple meet records and a couple invites. Uh, ran a little faster than we expected in April, but the um, expectation is to improve in May. So uh, fr from a team standpoint, that really starts tomorrow. Tomorrow is the first one that really counts, that stays permanent, that something's on the line. So we'll go into that meet on the boys and the girls' sides, trying to compete for division championships tomorrow. I love the, uh, I'm being sarcastic, but I'm interested in the ease of getting into the playoffs in the MHSAA in basketball, which is you can't not be in it. And in track, it's really tough to get in. I mean, you have to have that command performance at that regional meet. You have to run the qualifying time or do the qualifying field event distance or whatever the case may be. How do you handle that? I, I'm not going to talk to you again before regionals. How do you handle that with your athletes? You have a lot of kids who do qualify for state, but that's, to me, it would seem like a really pressure-packed situation. Well, we, we tried not to make it a pressure-packed situation, but it's unique in sports. I remember being a rec as a high school athlete myself. I'm probably more of a rec as a coach. But um, we compete in bigger invitationals all year. We go up against Division one, two, and three schools. We push them, we stretch them. So when we get to the regional, that meet is not the toughest meet that we've been in. So as long as we, we focus on being competitive every single day, every single meet, uh, so we try to go into that and we don't have to do anything different. We just have to keep doing that. So we, we do work at that really hard, uh, but it is a one day. You gotta feel good that day. Everything has to go okay that day, uh, but we'll be ready. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask for a couple of names. I know you love all of your athletes, and they've all contributed to the success that your team has had. But uh, if I'm looking at your team as an outsider and a listener tuning into the show tonight, who are a couple of names who have really gone above and beyond this year for your squad? Uh, if I'm looking at the starting off, uh, the boys run first this year. Look at the boys' side standing right near me right now is Noah Heck and Lively. He's a junior. Uh, last year, he won the mile and two mile in the SCAA. He was a state qualifier. Uh, this year, he's been a leader for us uh, in practice. He has run our fastest 800 mile and two miles so far this year. Um, he's got a great chance to be in the state meet in a number of events and compete to be an all-stater. Uh, he's an all-stater from cross country, uh, so he has really taken his game to another level. Uh, so he's doing great uh, along with his uh, relay, Greg Wayland, Connor Oakley, Sam Brady, Nolan Sullivan in the field. So those guys have really stepped up. Uh, on the girls' side, we're led by Andrea Jagelski, an all-stater multiple times. Uh, right now, she has run one of the top times in the state for Division IV in the 800, the mile, and the two mile. Uh, so she is really cranking right now. Her, her relay team, Clip senior Claire Calvert, All-Stater, returning to us. Uh, big leader on the team, Taylor Doty, Megan Poole, uh, Morgan Banbury in the field events. A little eighth grader named Anna Richards is doing really great for us right now. But, uh, and you know, again, I'd like to talk about every single one of these kids, but those are some of the kids that have posted, let's say, top ten times in the state so far. 
I want to talk to you about your division meet in a couple of minutes. We're going to take a quick break back at the studio. When we come back, we'll talk to a couple of the athletes who are here tonight from the Hillsdale Academy and then wrap up with Coach Roberts about that big meet tomorrow night at Camden Frontier, the SCAA division meet. We'll do that right after a break at our studios on the timeout show. Timeout show live tonight at the Broad Street Tavern where they have all kinds of specials and great food. The sushi bar is open. And come in and check the menu out. Also, you can check it out online on Facebook. Just check out the Broad Street Tavern. Noah Hecken Lively is a big, tall, lanky superstar for this Hillsdale Academy track team. Just a junior. Noah, how are you? Good. First guy I met you, I asked Coach, tell me a couple of the names that have stood out this year. He said, well, Noah. I mean, he came right to you first, and he's really proud of what you've accomplished this year. He mentioned the success you'd had in cross country earlier this year. Uh, what are your events so far this, this season for the academy? Um, I run the 4x8, the 800, mile, two mile. All in one, in one track meet? Well, yeah, tomorrow, yes. Whew. You must be in shape. You must eat right and stretch and all that stuff. How do you do all those events in one night? It really comes from running all winter, and then you build up to it and during the season, and then you can just run it. Okay, I'm going to ask you a, a question that I'm interested in about cross country and how it relates to track. Which one's more challenging? Is there any crossover between what you do in cross country and what you do in, in, during the track season? No, they're both challenging in their own ways. Like a uh, track, you have multiple races that you might have to run, and you're not necessarily fresh for each one. And then cross country is just a longer race, so... They're just, they're both running, so they're comparable that way. But other than that, it's like I'd say cross country is a little easier just for me because I'm endurance, but there's really no comparison. So running 3.1 miles is easier than running four <laughs> events at the division meet. It sounds really difficult either way. How much time do you get to rest between these events, and what do you do during that downtime? I usually uh, cool down slash warm up, just stay loose during on the field, because just stay loose. You pound a bunch of Cheetos and drink some Pepsi between races. <laughs> I wish. No. <laughs> That's a hard no. Uh, Noah Heck and Lively joining us so far this year. Uh, Postseason's coming up. Obviously, you have a division meet tomorrow. Obviously, the regionals are coming up. What are your goals? I mean, you, what, what would you be satisfied uh, with as the season draws to a close in terms of your own personal success? With the mile, I'd like to get into the 430s, and the two mile, I'd like to get down near 10 flat. I'd be really happy with that. Wow. Those are some impressive times. Noah, good luck and congratulations. I want to talk now to Andrea Jagelski. Andrea is part of a dynamic relay. Can I ask you about your relay team first? Uh, talk a little bit about your relay success this year, Andrea. Well, uh, we have Claire leading us off, and she's strong the whole time. And then we have uh, Taylor and Megan, and they're also very strong. And uh, we've been running really fast in these races and just trying to get that time down so we can have a good seat at state. With a name like, J with a name like Jagelski, are you allowed not to be a track star? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not allowed in your family, right? Okay. She's shaking her head no. Uh, you know, your brother had so much success, obviously, and your whole family. Uh, what is it about your, you know, did your parents love to run? Were they athletic too? I mean, how did, how did that happen that your family has all of the success? I don't know. I think we all have this competitive edge that gets us going. And you must like to run too, huh? Yeah. It's I, I'm interested in you people who like to run because I hate it. I hate it. And I just, I've tried to like it and I've tried to learn to like it and, you know, enjoy the pain and all of that. I don't at all. And I, how do you, do you, is it something that you just get used to or kind of become accustomed to, or have you always loved to run? I just love it. Wow. What a blessing to be able to say that. Andrea, your coach said that you're a multiple all-state track athlete. Um, going into this offseason, now your junior year, what do you hope to accomplish? I want to be a top three in the state in the two mile or the mile. What's your best race? Um, I'd say the two mile. Which one's harder? Uh, two miles. Two miles is a little bit tougher. Andrea, good luck to you, and thank you. Uh, Claire Calvert joining us right now. She is a senior, and uh, do you ever get sent to the office? Um, <laughs> not always, only when I'm bad. Yeah, I bet that happens all the time. So your dad's the principal or the headmaster over there. Uh, do you like seeing him around in the hallways, or does he embarrass you on a regular basis? Oh, every day, for he sure. He you every day. Yes, okay. yes. We got that out there. 
Uh, talk a little bit about your role. What are you running this year, and, and how's the season been going for you individually? Well, um, I'm mostly a middle distance runner, and I've been running in the 4x8 and 4x4 and 400s and 800s. But um, this year, I've mostly been focusing on the relay teams, and they've been really good. My um, individual season has been really good as well, but it's been great to be running with the girls and just like breaking records throughout the season. Do you practice the handoffs every practice or just a couple of times a week? How do you get that uh, chemistry, that symmetry on those handoffs? See, we've all run together so long that we really don't have to practice until the actual race. So it's great that we have that chemistry together. Yeah, that is a really big advantage. Thank you very much, and, and good luck to you the rest of the way. Coach, you're down in Camden tomorrow night uh, for a division meet. What? Uh, is happening there in terms of who you face and what are the stakes? So uh, the SCAA has about 13 track schools. There's a West Division meet with seven at Climax Scotts and six tomorrow at uh, Camden. So it's pretty much the Hillsdale County SCAA schools. And uh, it's one meet, winner take all for the division championship. So it used to be dual meets, used to be a different format. Uh, this is a good format. It's about the third year we've done this. So this is the, t this is the one that, that really counts and that's tomorrow. So maybe so you get some hardware to be won tomorrow night, you're saying? Well, yeah, hardware to be won, so SCAA trophies on the line. Um, you know, our goal is to be in position to compete for those. Uh, it, it's going to be tough. Uh, it, there's a lot of good track schools, Pittsburgh especially, uh, as we look at them tomorrow, on both the boys and the girls side. Uh, and, you know, great track talent at every single school that's there tomorrow. Every school will place kids in the top six. Uh, almost every school will compete with a, probably a champion or two. So uh, it, it's, you know, probably from the strength of numbers, uh, Pittsburgh and Hillsdale Academy are probably two of the top teams there tomorrow. Uh, but that'll be challenged by Litchfield, Waldron, Camden, and uh, Will Carlton Academy. Where is your regional and when? It's at Hillsdale College. It's Saturday, May 21st. So we're getting ready to host the uh, regional, the SCAA uh, championship where the East and West come together and the area best meet. And states this year are? We are at Hausman Field in Grand Rapids. Is that a fast track? It's a good track. It's downtown Grand Rapids. It's an old facility, a lot of history, but the state meets are always in the Grand Rapids area right now. Do you think you have a state title possibly uh, in this team this year? And, and how exciting is that going to be as you get close to that state competition? Yeah, there, there, are, there are a few areas that that is something uh, in, in the back of their minds. There's a few events that I think they'll be competing for state titles. So, you know, on this team, like we always say, there are kids competing for PRs. There are kids competing to get to the uh, state meet. And there are kids uh, trying to be state champions. And we have all of that. Uh, on this team. So that's something fun. That's not till June, but uh, if we can be healthy going into that meet, uh, there can be some exciting things that day. I think you have one of the strongest track programs in the area. Um, you're a great leader and a great uh, mentor to these kids. I appreciate you making the time for us, Mike, not just your teams, but uh, all of the academy teams. And we wish you all the best, man, uh, going into this next part of the season. Thanks for having us. Thanks for doing this sort of show to have something like this for, for Hillsdale College and for the local schools. It's really a great thing. A lot of people look forward to this. So uh, thanks for all you're doing for high school sports. Mr. Mike Roberts, thank you, sir. That's the Hillsdale Academy track team. We wish them the best in their division meet tomorrow night at Camden Frontier High School. We'll take a break. We'll be back with a panel. MP and Ben and Rick all in the house at the Broad Street Tavern coming up.